embraced him and they kissed. Um, and while they kissed, he snuck boop, 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 six seeds into her mouth. Um, channel. If you are new, I am Ambrosia and I am the Eclectic Herbalist. So, if you haven't... Dude, I'm sorry. I always forget to turn it off. Anyways. If you haven't noticed, I haven't posted in the last three weeks really anything and I would say today is my first day filming anything in about a month, but I have already filmed this video and the unboxing intro and outro like two days ago, but um, I had setting powder still on my face that I didn't notice until it was time to edit and it just wasn't like something I could get past. It was just like a big old special guest right under my eye. So I'm refilming it, but other than that, I haven't filmed anything since the tarot or actually no, I did film, um, something for, uh, Book of Shadows and Grimoires. I just haven't edited it yet. The reason why I have been so busy is because last month, the month of June, um, I think the first or second week, I finished the second draft to the book I'm writing and started on the third draft and I didn't want to fall into another six month long writer's block or just kind of funk where I wasn't doing anything at all. I set a goal to have the third draft done by the end of June, and um, I was on track to do it. I was getting like a chapter or two done a day, but then I got to parts where I was fluffing it up or adding more, or at kind of the beginning, the plot that I had in the second draft, which I wasn't too happy with. It didn't really fit. I couldn't make it a bigger issue any way I thought how, um, whereas when I was writing the third draft, upon a description and how characters reacted upon it, I came up with a whole new plot, which didn't make me have to take much out of place from the story already, and the new plot ties in seamlessly with basically everything else and the three other books that I want to go with this one, um, it's a way better plot. It actually ties in the very first plot that I had, like, not plot, but, like, issue, I guess would say, just the, the dramatic effect. I couldn't extend him and his character and his anger out throughout the whole book and make it bigger than what it was, but with this new issue, this new plot, it actually keeps him in his place, but also ties him in later in a different story. Anyways, anyways, I haven't even discussed what the book is about. So I am doing a retelling of the Hades and Persephone story. I am not doing a modern retelling of it. It is basically going to be, I don't know how to explain it, as if there was a full part other than the, the kind of small myths that we get. So if you are familiar with this tell, um, it's about how Hades got his wife Persephone and about how the seasons came about. There is a kind of full sort of hymn, it's called the Hymn to Demeter, I believe, um, or Hemonic Hymn to Demeter. I don't know, I'm gonna buy the book, but it, it's a lengthy, it's a lengthy little story that um, it's written kind of a while back so you kind of have to translate it to modern words um, but a lot of the story not this first book but the third book which is technically Demeter's part of the story will have big reference to a hymn to Demeter the first book is going to be called Core and it's actually Kind of explaining who Kor is, and for those of you who don't know, Kor is the name Persephone had prior to going to the underworld and becoming the queen of the underworld, so it's basically kind of an origin of how she came by, how she got to the underworld, their whole kind of relationship build, and then how she came by that name. 
I like I said I broke it up into four books so it's Core's perspective from the age of eight up until 18 from basically the time she meets Hades yes she meets him at eight no there is no sexual attraction but from the time she meets him up until she is sent back to Zeus and her mom and that's where that her story ends the second book is let me hold up two fingers the second book is Hades perspective from that time base that will be probably around the same beginning point and then a little bit after she had left to go to her mom's um, like a few hours after is where his will end the third book is Demeter's point point of view I haven't figured out where exactly I want hers to start but because I don't want to start it right when Core disappears so it will be at some some point at the beginning I think I have an idea now now that I say it out loud but hers will go from whatever point that is to the point that Core makes it up to Mount Olympus to meet her and Zeus for that final meeting I guess and then the fourth book is called Persephone and that basically takes place right after Kors ends and it's back in her perspective. So it is going to be a big lengthy book. It does not, as most retellings and most modern retellings do, it does not focus on Hades and Persephone's relationship or sexual relationship in the first book. It really just focuses on Kor herself and who she is and what she goes through. There is sex in the book, so it is not a um, kid's book. It's not for little kitties. It is like, I don't know, maybe 16 and up. But uh, the second book will have a good amount of sex and it will be on a completely different, since it's a different perspective, it will definitely be worded differently because it's a man's perspective. Um, Demeter's book will not have, like she won't be having sex. I'm debating on just what she goes through if sex will be in it, but it, it really wouldn't move the story along if, if she's not the one doing it and it would kind of, the only way I could think of it would be just like a dominance thing that she'd have to watch and I don't know if I want to put myself through that. But hers will most likely not have any sex. It will be, however, graphic. So hers will be more like gory and graphic, a little bit more deaths are going to occur in that one. And then Persephone will, the last book, will have more sex than the first one. I am done with the third draft and this, this whole week I'm basically taking off to give my mind a break when I say I felt like I was in the underworld for the last month. I really felt like I was there just watching and taking notes and doing stuff with them but uh, it was exhausting so I'm taking this week off and then I'm gonna do a read through and a pre-edit and then I'm gonna fluff up like six chapters that fell short by by some pages because I want them all to be a certain length and then because the story itself I didn't want it to be too long but now looking at it it's not really at the length I want it to be so I have about two or three chapters in my back pocket that I am going to add after I do the read through and the pre edit, because I'm going to take notes and try and suture up some loopholes, tighten everything up, make it good, and then I'm going to send it to my editor, who is really just my sister in law, and I'm going to pay her to edit it. And I think that's the extent I'm doing for editing. I will then do some beta reads, and they might, you know, find a few little things that they can inform me about. And then I'll get it back and fix that, and then I will be publishing it. I do not have a date set for publishing, but those are like the last few steps I have. Um, I am really happy about the story as far as right now. I'm really nervous because it's, you know publishing a book and I mean not everyone's gonna like it and there's gonna be people who love it but there's always gonna be people who hate it and you know there's sex in it so some people might be like oh it was boring sex I the you know what the first book it might have boring sex I'm gonna be honest you might not be like oh this spice level is five out of five no it might be one out of five it's from the perspective of someone who is trapped with her mother basically for 18 years she doesn't 
have the sex, she doesn't have those feelings, she doesn't even understand those feelings, so it's going to be told as such, very soft, very sweet, and very delicate, whereas in Hades, in his book, it's going to be a little bit uh, more graphic, I should say, but let me get off of my foot, it's falling asleep, bring it down, bring it down with me. Um, so, I thought, since I gave this update, I thought I also would do a horrible retelling of the hymn to Demeter. So you guys kind of have an idea of what that story is about, if you have not already heard it. If you have and just want to enjoy my horrible retelling of it, stick around. Um, I call it a horrible retelling, I don't want to call it a ghetto retelling, but it's just like a really quick summarized version of it. Alright, so check it. So it starts off with Persephone and her little nymph friends, like chilling, hanging out in a field, frolicking, smelling flowers, making flowers, what have you. Uh, Demeter, I think, is like out in a forest doing whatever she's doing. I don't really remember. She's just not where Persephone is. And then Hades is like chilling, king of the underworld, and he spots her. Yeah. In the book I have, which is Greek, myth Greek myths, it's told that he spot her while he was just kind of walking. He found her and he was like, ooh la la, I want me a piece of that. But in the hymn to Demeter, it describes it as he was like down in the underworld and he happened to see her and he was still like, ooh la la, I want that, I need me a piece of that. So either way, how it goes, he was there, he was not. He materialized, because he has the power of creation, I guess, too, a a flower that starts with an N, its botanical name, a necros, a necros, I can't, y'all know I can't pronounce uh, some words, so, um, an N, but it's a daffodil, it's a daffodil, whatever it is, it's a daffodil, he manifests the daffodil and Persephone was like, that's a pretty flower, and so she went to go look at it and smell it, and when she went to smell it, he was like, ah, opened up a hole, <laughs> opened a hole in the earth and he snatched her took her in like a in his chariot and raced her all the way down to the palace but while he was like you know riding his chariot she took something off like her peplos or her scarf or whatever and threw it into the river and the river nymphs took it forever they took it to take it back to Demeter so I don't know what took them so long but they took it and that's where they were taken now Persephone is with Hades that's where she's at Demeter hears her scream when she fell through the hole, so she goes running, but by the time she gets there, Persephone is gone, so she's like ho-hum, distraught, walks around for like 10 days, not knowing where she is, nobody wants to help her, nobody is telling her anything, um, I don't know if it is before or after she speaks to the sun god Helios, but at some point, some mortal goes up to Mount Olympus, kills and cooks his son for the gods and all the other gods are like mm, that looks suspicious but Demeter was so distraught that she gobbled that up and they're like oh Demeter no but she ate that shit moved on anyways 10 days 10 days pass and she's like fuck all this I'm gonna go ask the sun gods so she goes ask Helios and this guy he looks at her and he goes you know what because you're crying and it makes me feel bad, I'll tell you. Yes, I did see what happened to Persephone. Hades took her, but you should not be upset. Because he is a king and he is, uh, you know, brother to Zeus and brother to you. Good genes. Good genes, right? You should be happy. And she was like, I'm not really happy about that, but I guess I'll just get over it. And then she dips to some village. And I think she meets a king and his family. She meets these girls and they take her back to their house. I don't remember if their dad was the king or not, because it's been like two years since I've read through this and tried to translate it in my head. Um, anyways, she goes there, and mind you, she disguised herself as like some old lady, so nobody knows it's her. She goes and lives with them, and they had a baby boy, like a little baby, and she was like, oh, I like this kid, I'll gonna, I'm gonna make him a divine. So at night, she cast him over flames that wouldn't really burn him but it was how she made him a divine I guess um, and then one night when she was doing it the mom or the sister walked in and was like what the, what the fuck are you doing and so 
Um, how I read it, now again, this trans it can translate completely differently, and I could be way off. But in the writing, it said she cast the baby to the floor. So in my head, she fucking tossed that shit. She tossed that child on the floor. She threw that kid to the floor. So she threw it to the floor, got mad, made them build a monument of her. Because then she like presented herself, made them build a monument of her. And then she went and caused a famine for the remainder of, e of the year or for the next 12 months after that. Um, and then finally, and also low key, Zeus told Hades he could take Persephone. Hades went to him and was like, can I take her? And Zeus was like, yeah, go for it. I don't care. So that's why he really wasn't doing anything at first. But now mortals are dying all over the world. And he's like, Demeter, get your ass up here. And so she goes and he was like, can you stop? Can you stop doing this? And she's like, no, I don't think I will. And he was like, what do you want? What, do, what can I give you? And she's like, I want my daughter back. We could start with that. And he was like, okay, Herms, Hermes, go get her. So Hermes flutters down to the underworld and he's like, hey man, I need to take your your woman back up there. We, Demeter's causing trouble, as you sponsor her back, I need to take her. And so Hades was like, all right, no problem. I am a kind, caring husband. And so like, it says Persephone ran to him, embraced him, embraced him, and they kissed. Um, and while they kissed, he, snuck boop, 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 six seeds into her mouth um if i'm kissing you and i don't care if it's from your fingers or out your mouth if six m seeds end up in my mouth i'm throwing up in your face he snuck six seeds in her mouth and she got, ate them ate them ate them fuckers and then went with hermes and then they get up there, and so Demir's like, Oh, my dog, my love, I've missed you. Tell me, please, have you eaten anything while you were down there? And Persephone's like, Oh, mother, I cannot lie to you. He snuck me six seeds of the pomegranate. How do you know he snuck them to you? How do you know if he snuck them? And how do you know that there are six? Seems a little fishy to me. Seems a little sus. Anyways, so Demir was like, Well, fuck, now... You gotta go back down there, and Zeus was like, oh, we'll just, uh, how many did you eat? Six? Six months? Six months here, six months there. Be done with it. Spring! Winter. And that's how that, that's how that came to be. It's my horrible retelling of it. I hope you enjoyed it. Not very many details. How did you know? So that's why I decided to write the story. I just felt like there was more behind it. You know that he didn't sneak you them six seeds. How'd you know? How did you count? Why didn't you ask him questions when he popped them in your mouth? During a kiss? How unromantic. Anyways, it's said in all the other myths that she ends up growing to love him regardless of the uh, the kidnappery. So, and she told, she turned a whole nymph into a mint plant because the, the nymph was like, I love Hades and I'm gonna win him back or whatever, the, however that story went. It was either her or her mom. Now, if Demeter did it, uh, obviously Demeter wasn't too upset about the marriage either, because she was like, uh, you're not going to get in my daughter's man's pants. I don't think so. So either way, either way, and he's like the only god that don't cheat on his wife. He loves her, so like, sounds like it was planned, and no one wants to admit it. But anyways, that's why I've been gone. That's what I've been doing. If you do want to keep up with updates on the book, I do have a author Instagram page. It is called Ambrosia R. Harris. So you have to look up, you'll find it. Um, I'm just kind of doing quotes from the book and little updates as of right now. Um, and some book reviews of books that I'm reading. But other than that, it's not really popping until I can get the release or the publishing date out. Uh, I did make my own cover. So the cover that will be on the book and all of the whatever editions I do, I did do all those covers. I forgot to bring my camera with me when I went to Hobby Lobby, but um, I just, I bought, I bought these two and this and a two point obsidian crystal that I wrapped in leather to make a necklace because that's part of the story and a white poster board and then I just kind of took over 130 something pictures, edited them, and then went to Canva, picked a kind of 
book cover template I liked, put that together, went to Amazon KDP, they offer templates for book covers depending on the amount of pages. So I put in 500 pages because that is my goal. Um, they give you the template and I just kind of matched all my pictures up. Boom. So the cover is on the Instagram page as well if you want to check that out. Um, but yeah, I have a lot going on. I have the tea business, the labels, this novel, this YouTube. I kind of am on a little break from OnlyFans just because it's really exhausting to do. And to be honest, I have horrible anxiety and it, talking to people stresses me out, completely stresses me out, makes my heart race. So I'm just taking a little break until I can make more content. But other than that, that's what's going on. I hope you guys enjoyed my telling, my little retelling, and I hope you guys, as always, have a lovely day, and I will see you guys in my next video.